Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we will we are going to discuss about the earthquakes and Earth's interiors and how did they detect them. Okay, so what is an earthquake? Earthquakes are is the vibration of the Earth produced by the rapid release of energy, focal of energy. Now, in an earthquake, we have both the focus and the epicenter. Now, the focus is the point within the Earth. It is the exact position uh, in the Earth where the earthquake is, starts. And the epicenter is the location on the surface directly above the focus. Now, the faults are the fractures of the Earth where the movement has occurred. Uh, if, you, if there are movement uh, in the faults, usually there, there, there should be an earthquake, okay? So focus, epicenter, and the, this is the, uh, how it is illustrated or how it works. So uh, movement along your fault, uh, along the fault, uh, mainly the focus is here. So the main movement of the fault is here where you, the energy is released. Now, the focus is the point where all the energy is uh, being released. And the epicenter is the, the, the point directly above the, uh, the, on the surface from the focus. So this is a good example of a fault. So the, the trees are usually uh, in this form, the trees should be aligned uh, more or less perfectly by the farmers. But because of the earthquake, there were some parts of the orchard that were misaligned or um, realigned by the earthquake. So we have the causes of an earthquake. First, we have the elastic rebound hypothesis. Most earthquakes are produced by the rapid release of elastic energy that is stored uh, that has been subjected to greater forces. So when the strength of the rock is exceeded uh, by, the, by the energy that, is, that it was storing, then eventually it will uh, suddenly break, causing a vibration, causing the vibrations and eventually your earthquakes. So this is a good example of your elastic rebound theory. So we have here a fault, and then we have crustal movement on the different parts of the fault where there's a buildup of energy. And when the cohesion between the two parts of the rock, the two blocks of the fault uh, is exceeded by the buildup of energy, eventually, uh, once it can, once the cohesion of the rocks cannot handle the, uh, the buildup of energy, eventually it will slip and there will be an earthquake and we will have a fracture or the rupture of the ground. And so in the earthquakes, we have the aftershock and foreshock and also the main shock. So an aftershock is a small earthquake that follows the main quake, the main shock, and the foreshock are small earthquakes that are of, that often precedes a major earthquakes. So if there are, there was a main shock followed by a stronger, uh, there was a strong earthquake that we may assume it was a main shock, then followed by a, uh, by a stronger earthquake, then the preceding earthquake should uh, the preceding the preceding earthquake which was uh, um, uh, less powerful will become a uh, foreshock and the stronger earthquake will become the main shock and there will eventually become uh, there will eventually have uh, events called the aftershocks where there are small earthquakes because rocks do not really uh, don't really adjust themselves as one. They will slowly recover or reorient themselves uh, due to the changes in the in the in between faults. Now, 
so measuring earthquakes, um, we have seismographs, seismograms, and surface waves. Now, seismographs are the instruments, and seismograms are the um, are the records, uh, are the recorded data. Now, back then they used paper, uh, paper seismograms for their data. Uh, today, they are actually digital data for their seismograms. When back then, when the time was analog. Okay. Now, surface waves. These are seismic waves that travel along the Earth's outer layer. And often, the, these surface waves are the results of the movements of the uh, body waves. So we will discuss that later. So this is how a seismogram, a seismograph works. Okay, so uh, this is an analog, uh, analog version of a seismograph. So we have here a seismograph that is um, mounted in somewhere, mounted in the bedrock. And when the earth moves, there is a weighted pen that uh, is connected to a rotating drum where during the vibration, the recordings of the, the, the vibrations trigger the movement of the pen or the swinging and then write something, writes the amount, the energy that the seismograph experience. So, like I said, this is the uh, first, the primary wave, the secondary wave, and the surface waves. So these are the earthquake waves, so body waves. They are identified as P waves and S waves. So P, y, P waves are primary waves, are the push or pull. They are moving transverse that push or compress and pull expand in the direction that the waves are traveling. So uh, from the from the focus to the surface so it travels through the soils liquids and gases and have the greatest velocity of all earthquake waves now the s waves uh, these are the body waves that travel inside the earth's layers and then shaking particles right uh, at the right angles they are longitudinal and then uh, sorry they travel through soils, but they as uh, solids, but they cannot travel through liquids. Okay, so this is how it moves. So this is our these are P waves, where it's like a slinky. There's a push and pull motion. Okay, and then. These are S waves, or there are wavy motions, so up-down movement. And then, as a result of your S waves and P waves reaching to the surface, uh, the movements that they produce uh, also creates a secondary wave, or the effects that makes your surface waves. Okay. So locating an earthquake. So the earthquake distance is the uh, the epicenter is located using the difference between the arrival times between your P waves and S waves, as they are con uh, they have a constant speed that they travel to, and then the earthquake direction, the travel time from three or more seismograms, uh, to find the exact location of an earthquake's epicenter. And earthquake zones are the 95% of the major earthquakes that occur in narrow zones. So basically, um, a seismograph cannot really uh, cannot really determine the exact location, but it can determine a the distance of an earthquake from uh, from its point from this between the earthquake from the epicenter to the seismograph and from there using three different seismographs uh, located in three different directions um, using that 
based on the distance where they can where those three uh, distances meet from those three seismographs they can narrow down the location of the earthquakes and their its direction from the seismograph okay so this is a good example so we have here a seismograph in montreal and then we have a seismograph in paris and we have a seismograph in sao, sao paulo so based on their radius uh in their their estimated distance from the earthquake like i said earlier they can make a circle or yes a, a perimeter where it is where the possible earthquake is located now using the two other uh, circles that was produced by the three by the two other seismograph where they intersect the, that must be the uh, perimeter of that uh, or rather the epicenter of the earthquake and measuring an earthquake so historically scientists have used two different types of measurements to describe an earthquake we have the intensity and magnitude so for the magnitude we have the richter scale it is based on the amplitude of the greatest seismic wave rather the richter scale is uh, measures the energy that was released by the earthquake and it is not it is not an arithmetic graph but rather it is a logarithmic graph so um, a one point uh, magnitude 3.1 earthquake is 10 times more 10 times more powerful than a magnitude magnitude 3 not just 0.1 more powerful okay so that is how it works the Richter scale works and then the moment uh, the measuring the earthquakes we have the mom, uh, moment magnitude or momentum magnitude it is derived from the amount of the displacement that occurs along the fault zone and the movement magnitude, uh, moment magnitude is most widely used as measurement for earthquakes because it is the only magnitude scale that estimates the energy released by the earthquakes and it can measure the very large ones okay so these are the magnitudes that are uh, expected worldwide so uh, every year we actually experience earthquakes that are really small and uh, but rather cannot be felt but that is much better than uh, great earthquakes uh, because if there will be no earthquakes that are occurring meaning there is an energy buildup when when the energy is building up then it is possible that a major or a great earthquake can be can occur so these are some notable earthquakes in history so as we have said earlier earthquakes are actually releases of energy so if we have smaller earthquakes uh, we are experiencing smaller earthquakes, meaning we, uh, the energy is being released constantly and then there is no buildup of energy. But if we are not experiencing earthquakes, then we should be uh, a bit more afraid because there might be a sudden release of a, a large earthquake. Okay. So that is it for part one.